New all-time highs. Music to my ears, music to your ears, and the ultimate bullish signal. But today was more than just a new all-time high. It was a statement. A gap up an absolute rally on the back of softer data and falling rates. So what comes next? That's the question we're going to answer today by looking at the latest charts, gamma levels, to determine how we want to be positioned leading up to OPEX for the rest of May and into June. But we also need to talk about earnings, but not US earnings, European earnings. We got the latest data for the stock 600 and things don't quite look as good as the US, but that is simply opportunity. Are things going to improve? Are European stocks a better buy than the US right now? We've got a lot to talk about, so let's roll the tape. Welcome everybody to the Daily Recap Show where we talk about stocks and the financial markets. My name is Chase. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, like this video and leave a comment for the algorithm. Cheers. Truly an incredible day here in the market. The market finally getting what they wanted and that was the cool CPI print. And this is part of the reason why we had this incredible rally here today. I mean, probably one of the most bullish days here in 2024. We had everything rally pretty much except for consumer cyclicals right and consumer defensives and then this very small section here uh, in com services and the reason being is because we had got very very cool and soft data today we got cool inflation data we got cool retail sales data you can see consumer cyclicals is obviously going to take that on the chin uh, the same with consumer defensives because at the end of the day you know these are goods processing companies and then these guys right here tend to be defensive sectors maybe not so much netflix and disney but definitely telecom services right here and uh, they took it on the chin but we did see utilities be uh, fairly upbeat and that has to just do with overall energy demand and what happened in the commodity sector we're going to talk about that a little bit later uh, when we tackle the charts but let's actually get into the data today right so consumer price index came in very very cool 0.3 we were expecting 0.4 this is exactly what the market's been wanting after fairly hot inflation data however cpi did come in at 3.4 percent which is in line with expectations so we got a cool month over month figure the year over year figure remains uh, fairly steady so we're not seeing massive deflation and x Food and energy came in line at 0 0.3 and then 3.6. So it wasn't like super, super cool CPI data, but it was cool nonetheless and moving in the right direction. And this is kind of what the market wants. We can meet our expectations in line on the year over year figure coming a little bit cool over the next couple months on the month over month figure. The market's going to really, really like that. And we also got retail sales data right here. Now it did come in quite cool. We were expecting a 0.4% month over month increase. We got zero. And then the core control group, negative 0.3%. But then if you exclude autos, actually 0 0.2 percent so if we look at it x autos it came well in line so and this is telling us that things are cooling but not really falling apart and that's part of the reason why we had the rally we did today you know at the same time rates came down significantly uh, as a result it was quite a big move there in the rates market bonds got bid up quite a bit and we did actually see itp home construction be the best performing sector on the day quite obviously then semiconductor software technology right and then real estate right there so it's very obvious what's going to happen inflation coming down rates coming down that's going to favor risk assets and rate sensitive assets and that's literally technology real estate and we also had like stuff like utilities healthcare gdx also did gain a little bit you know because the second we have uh, rates coming down that just means easier monetary policy it means there's going to be more money in the system and gold is a currency hedge that's why we actually saw gold miners up 1.44 percent here today metals and mining very similar to gold uh, gdx is actually part of this index right here xme this is a derivative uh, of xme those sectors beat the spy spy return 1.24 percent here today xlf financials plus 0.74 percent and guys every single sector gained here i mean even regional banks discretionary staples pretty much flat but a slight gain when you look at it in aggregate and it all just had to do with the dynamics of cooler data so huge rally here for the spy breaking all-time highs now this is the weekly chart and you can see bullish and then look at the daily chart and another all-time high it wasn't just a gap up it was a gap up and absolutely go i mean you know we opened what half a percent just under half a percent here in the spy and then we rallied all the way to new all-time highs and you have to understand that this is 5300 was the call gamma resistance and i'd love to see uh what this is going to be um in over the next couple of days i think we might even move the the call gamma resistance up to 5400 into opex which would be insanely bullish and here is the gamma chart so we can actually see that 5300 is still the call gamma resistance and 5000 the put support 
or the gamma flip is actually now at uh, 5195 so it's at 5200 and guys pretty much if the gamma flip is moving up the tape that's also really bullish you know that's also very very bullish so we now expect that 5200 is probably the line of support that's we want to look to if we do pull back so 5200 is now that line 5300 strike is still very big the 5400 strike is nowhere near as large but especially now that we've actually made a close you know a daily close above the 5300 i want to see what traders are going to do relative to the 5400 strike and even the 5500 strike i do believe bmo capital came out and increased their price target for the s p 500 at 5600 absolutely crazy now i'm still sticking to my price target my end of year price target and you can go have a look at this on my video on the 1st of january my end of year price target is 5384 so if we do go ahead and beat this target right here at by the way, in January, I had the most bullish price target on the street everywhere. No one had a more bullish price target than me. Look at where we are right now, 5308. And if we continue this price action by the looks of it sometime next week before the end of May, we're definitely going to hit this 5384 level or my end of year price target. But, you know, it wasn't just the S&P 500 that rallied. Look at the uh, the RSP up 0.8%. Look at the Dow Jones up 0.88%. The NASDAQ to 1.49%. Mid caps gained, small caps gained. Look at the IWM up 1.25%. And the IW, I, the S&P 600 is small caps. IWM is like small caps and micro caps. Uh, we saw growth significantly outperform value here. Growth did outperform value, but, you know, did put up a very good day. A little bit of upbeat action here in the after hours. And then rates. Let's have a look at rates. Yeah, a huge, huge move here in rates. 2.23% to the downside, a uh, move in the 10 year. And we actually saw that had significant implications here for bonds. Bonds were super positive uh, all day. Look at the AGG up 0.66%. That's a big move for the AGG. Same with the TLT. And again, yeah, up a little bit in the after hours. And I think this trend is going to continue. You know, I said right here, guys, I said this is the top for rates. Nobody believed me. Now we're moving lower and we probably are going to go lower. We're probably going to get we're probably going to get to this 4% mark right here in 2024. We were pricing in seven cuts. OK, the market got way, way ahead of itself. And then right here, we were pricing in on some people's books, one hike, right? And then the market got a bit too ahead of itself. So now we're going to pull back. I think the truth is somewhere in the middle, probably around here probably around here, anywhere from like, I would say 4.05% to 4.2%. This is probably where we get maybe one to two cuts for the year, possibly three, depending on how the data unfolds, but a very bullish day nonetheless. And you want to take these as they come. Now, Bitcoin breaking above uh, this trend line right here. We want to see if we are going to actually have a little bit of a fake out like this, or if we are going to pull back, use our support, and then continue the rally up in Bitcoin to all time highs at 74K. This is exactly what Bitcoin bulls want to see. A break above this trend line, a uh, higher low, a uh, move high up money. Now let's actually hop on the S&P 500. So this is the daily chart, guys. We have our two very, very key levels. So the first level is actually the call gamma resistance at 5,300. The second level right here, this is the gamma flip zone, okay? So until we actually get below uh, this 5,200 area right here, I am not a seller of anything. Okay. In fact, if we do pull back to the 5200, that would be actually quite bullish. And I mean, on a technical chart basis, short, this is the options market right here. This is the line we want to look at. And then maybe we can look to downside if we do get below. But like, let's be honest, this is really the low we really want to be looking at. So we want to be buying dips all the way to 5200. And even if we do break below the 5200, we can look to as low as 5100 to, to offer some serious support. So there's a ton of support here in the S&P 500 for us all the way down. I think it does get a little bit grim if we do get below this figure right here, but I don't think that's going to happen. Look at the strength of this market. I think leading up into this weekend, leading up into OPEX, we probably just do trend sideways and upward, if anything. I think all pullbacks will be met by vicious, vicious buying activity by the bulls very, very quickly. What we're seeing right here is probably something very similar to what we're going to get right here. You know, minimal pullbacks and we're just going to completely move higher uh, to where the core gamma resistance is right now. It's at 5300 and that's why I think we're probably going to trend sideways for the rest of the week. But the second we have a lot of this gamma roll off, it moves up to the 5400. It's off to the races and then 5400 is our next price target there for the S&P 500 guys. So buy dips at 5200 to as low as 5100, but buy dips anywhere in between 5300 to 5200 and look for higher prices. Look for that core gamma resistance to move up the tape that is how you want to play the s p 500 into may into june at least for the rest of the year the melt up is alive and well and i don't see uh this stopping anytime soon being you want to be in assets you want to be in risk assets you want to be long exposure because the melt up is underway
Okay, guys, so looking at some stats. So this is actually from yesterday, just something really interesting that I just thought I'd show you guys today. But this is essentially the S&P 500 after an eight day winning streak at a record high. And we don't have a lot of data here, so it isn't anything statistically significant. This has actually only happened three other times in history, and we are approaching the fourth right here. Now, the other three times it happened, it actually happened about the midway point of a bull market right here, as well as here. Yeah, you know, in 2017, the other one time was actually 2021, the very top of that bull market. And now we triggered one right here at about the 5200 area in the S&P 500. Now, based on the stats that we could see right here, forward returns are not that great, but that's because this 2021 figure here is quite disastrous. Now we can see six months later, the return was negative 1.5%, three months, two months, one month, it was 0 0.8, 0 1.1 and 1.6. And essentially what this data set is telling us is that when we sort of have massive win streaks at all time highs, it probably means that we are gonna trend sideways quite a number of months and then sort of will begin to see price action to the upside 12 months later from there. So not an amazing stat when you look at the overall picture. However, I would take it with a grain of salt because there's only three points. And generally speaking, you need 30 data points for any piece of data, for any data set to be statistically significant. Now, let's actually talk about earnings, but we're not going to talk about S&P 500 earnings today. No, we're not going to talk about that. We're actually going to talk about the stocks 600. This is Europe's flagship index, essentially the S&P 500 of Europe. We're just going to dive into their Q1 2024 earnings just to see how this index is going. You know, this is the second biggest index in the world, the stock 600 right behind the S&P 500. It's really good to just get a, an understanding of where we are and where we're going. Now, you can see here that in 2024, Q1, the growth rate for the stock 600 is negative 5.4%. In Q1 2023, the stock 600 did $136 billion in earnings. This year, we're doing $129 billion. Now, this is based on 307 constituents with current data, and it's actually a blended earnings growth rate. So those that haven't reported, they use the assumed numbers. Now, we are looking at a negative growth rate here for the stock 600. So not all that great. It does look like uh, most of the market, small caps, mid caps, Europe, China, are still producing negative earnings for this quarter. And we will see that inflect later on in the year. And we can see this with the end of 2024 year earnings. Stock 600 is expected to produce 4.7%. And that means the second quarter, as well as the third quarter and the fourth quarter earnings are probably going to be very, very good to make up for the lackluster negative 5.4% earnings we've seen so far here in the stock 600 for this quarter. Last year, earnings for the full year was $744 billion. This year, earnings are projected to be $778 billion, $34 billion in growth, again, representing 4.7%. The best performing sector year for the year is going to be financials. Now, we do know that Europe is heavily weighted to financials, materials, and industrials, not so much technology, but we could see that every single sector year is expected to produce growth, but it is in the low single digit, in some instances, high single digit earnings growth here. So, you know, if you are wanting to invest in Europe, the places I would look at is probably stuff like financials. You look at healthcare and then maybe like real estate, especially with the valuations that real estate trade across the globe. And maybe you can look at basic materials as well. Now let's actually dive into the individual quarters for the rest of 2024. So we can see a 4.5% for the full year. Q1 is expected to be negative 7.5%. So it does look like earnings are actually going to get worse. However, the blended earnings growth rate is a bit different. Then we do actually inflect here in the second quarter. We're looking to grow 1.6% in the stock 600. And then Q3, Q4 are the two big quarters plus 9.1% and plus 8.2%. However, we don't have a lot of constituents with earnings estimates, but this is the best data that I can bring to you guys right now. And it, and it does look like if you are going to bet on the Eurozone right now or in the second quarter is probably when you want to get in because once these earnings start to materialize and if they come in, let's say better than expected, you're going to be a little bit too late to the party. So you know, if you are looking at Europe, if you are looking at international diversification, guys, you really want to get into Europe as early as possible and probably within the next one to two months before Q2, Q3 earnings start to materialize. 
Now this right here is revenue expectations for Q1 2024, just giving us a snapshot on how companies are doing. We can see here that on average, 50% of companies are reporting above their expectations and 48.8 are reporting below. On the revenue side, things are looking fairly balanced between missing and not missing. However, on the earnings side, looking a lot better, you can see 60% of companies reporting above their earnings expectations, 36% below 3.3% in line. However, I do think that this is still below the historical average. I do think the stock 600 historical average beat rate is very similar to the S&P 500 at about 68%. So, you know, quite a bit below the historical trend. And then lastly, looking at countries you want to be invested in, not all countries are made equal. Portugal, is looking to grow the most at 15.5%. Then Italy, Spain, Finland, Denmark, Norway are all reporting earnings growth along with Switzerland. And then almost every other country is actually reporting negative growth here for the first quarter 2024. This is the stock 600 so far at 5.4% right there. United Kingdom, negative 3.1%. And then Sweden, Netherlands, Germany, France, Belgium, Austria, and Poland. That is a huge earnings decline in Poland, negative 55.8%. I actually wonder what's going on right there it'd be very interesting to look into that all in all guys if you do want to look at sectors you know you can look at the data i showed you previously and if you want to look at countries that are growing at least this quarter these are the ones you want to look at right here now let's switch gears and look at a couple of sentiment measures. So this is just both as global fund manager survey. They essentially ask FMS investors or fund managers a bunch of questions, get the answers, correlate them, and then see where they stand. Now the question is, what do you consider as the biggest tail risk? And I'm assuming this is for 2024. 41% of participants said higher inflation than geopolitics. An economic hard landing came in at 15%. Then the US election and a systematic credit event yeah, at 9%, 8%. And then the AI bubble at 4% and the Asia FX war at 2%. So, you know, by far the three biggest risks is higher inflation. That is obviously the biggest one by far, geopolitics and then an economic hard landing. So, you know, the big news headlines, they are seen as the biggest tail risk. And to be honest, they should be seen as the biggest tail risk. US elections tend to be non-events. Credit events tend to be very, very hard to predict. The AI bubble, while in the bubble, is probably a positive for equities and less of a tail risk in 2024. Different story. 2025 and beyond and the asia effects war well think of that as you will another question they ask is when do you expect the u.s economy to fall in the recession 64 percent of fund managers said no recession in the next 12 months 19 percent said the first half 2025 second half 2024 was 13 percent but actually down from march 2024 by a wide margin as you can see despite the inflation data and gdp data and employment data we got in the last couple of months and in the first half of 2024 we already done that only one percent said that they would now why would this fall into a recession right here well that's because we normally backdate the data oftentimes when we are in a recession we don't realize it and then we look back and say hey the recessions actually started here it was when we got weaker non-farms it was when PCE data came in a bit hot it was when ppi data came in a bit hot this was the start of the recession and then we normally backdate it and say hey the recession started here so, so i believe that's what a couple of fund managers were agreeing to right there now let's talk a bit about about the economy. This is very, very interesting. Restaurant median observed sales data shows acceleration from 3.8% in March to 6.2% in April. So restaurant sales actually ticking up a bit. That's going to be good for restaurant stocks, Chipotle. And for the most part, earnings for that group was fairly mixed but it had less to do with sales and more to do with pricing power and the companies with pricing power we saw do really really well that being said median year over year growth according to bloomberg is showing an uptick here in restaurant sales and that just shows the consumers hanging in there that's overall good for the economy because food is a huge expense especially food away from home for a bunch of americans and people around the globe this right here is average appliance pricing versus major appliance cpi all major appliances at Best Buy. And essentially what this is showing us is goods, the inflation of goods. Now Thinkum's basket of major appliances shows an average year over year price decrease of 6% in April, 2024, continuing its negative year over year turn for its 13th month in a row, as you can see right here. This data set has a correlation of 0.84% with the CPI for major appliances, March 19th to March, 2024. So goods inflation actually decreasing and for the 13th month in a row. But what I previously just showed you 
restaurant, which is kind of services, I guess, is actually increasing. So, you know, services inflation continues to be that sticky part of inflation, whereas major appliances continue to decline, at least all major appliances. However, if we look at CPI major appliances, they actually are ticking up ever so slightly. So we might see this tick up as well. I don't know if it lags in any way. It doesn't look like it lags, but just very interesting to see that the CPI pool of data is actually increasing ever so slightly. Another measure for the consumer is aggregate credit card utilization is slightly below the long-term average. We actually tend to see this with high disposable income. We do know that disposable income is actually growing a lot higher than inflation at the moment. We can see that US credit card utilization, total available credit cards, 2023 to present. This is credit card limits. This is average utilization right here and then credit card utilization at the moment. So it's slightly below the long-term average and well below the credit card limit at the moment. And that's very, very healthy. We have a lot of people talking about, you know, putting all their money on credit cards. And a lot of the data just doesn't really show that. A lot of the data shows that consumers are actually in a very, very healthy position. It's just how people look at the data and interpret very specific points of data that can come across as the consumer is weakening, particularly from a credit standpoint. But utilization remains at the average credit card limits remain at all time highs. And that is very, very healthy for the consumer in aggregate. OK, looking at some key charts, guys, we look at these technical charts every single week. The BOFA technical analysis team release it to us. And the reason why we look at it is because 78 percent of fund managers have access to BOFA's research it means they're looking at these charts. And it's a great edge to have just to see what technical analysis smart money are looking at, because we don't really know what they use. And this is something that they use. Now, this right here, the FTSE 100, the UK index has broken out from a 2018 to 2024 big base right here, holding above a wide zone zone of supports from 8040 to 7900 to 7750 and 7670 would keep this big base breakout intact with upside counts of 8900 9300 9800 and potentially 10200 so essentially we've broken out of this massive massive base right here upside targets are these targets right here four major targets this was the breakout line after this all time high right here the uk market has rallied and pretty much that means that if we do pull back we should find supports all the way down to as low as 7750 but upside targets asymmetrically skewed to the upside of 8900 9300 9800 and a huge huge upside target from the bottom of this base to the top right here of 10200 and that would represent close to a 25 percent increase from where we are right now looking at the dax the german index remains bullish the breakout from a two-year bullish cup and handle suggests potential upside to 19,200 to 20,000 and 20,700 last week's breakout from early april into early may bullish flag corroborates the positive outlook from the dax we've got a, a little bit of a bullish flag right here we've broken out in a very big way upside targets take us to 19,200 20,000 20,700 with strong support here at 17,600 17,000 so if you do pull back uh, look to buy dips sell rips because it does look like eu markets are on fire right now particularly with earnings looking to inflect in a very big way looking at the stocks 50 index weekly chart with moving averages very similar to the dax we had a bullish flag right here breaking out upside targets take us to 5230 5360 5500 with supports at 4800 415 now there's this is quite a low level of support i would say that support would come right here if we do pull back and then move higher break these upside targets and then looking at the weekly global advanced decline line this is 73 country indices just to tell us where we are and pretty much across the globe, stocks are making new highs as indices are also at new all-time highs. We know that the European stocks are making all-time highs, the DAX, the FTSE, same with the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, here in Australia as well. And that coincides with the advanced decline line moving high, and that's exactly what you want to see. If this was declining or stocks were making new highs, that would be a bit of a risk factor, but the advanced decline line has made a new all-time high. And that is very, very bullish. And that means breadth is coinciding with the overall movement of the index. Now, this right here is the S&P 500. If the S&P 500 follows bullish seasonality and positive breadth signals, the index should embark on a summer rally. This suggests that April into May corrective phase is likely a bullish continuation pattern. If support holds, especially the upper levels of support, the case for a breakout above 5265 and targets 5560 on a summer rally. The case is for a breakout above 5265 and targets 5560 on a summer rally. So 
you know, we could pull back to this level right here if we want, find support between 5146. That's completely normal. However, if we do break out, that leaves upside target 5265 and on the upper end 5560. So very, very bullish targets right here. And this is a measured move from this moving average right here to here. And that's where we get the 5560 level. Uh, very bullish from both for right here. And that will come in the summer. Now, looking at the S&P 500 advanced decline line, solid market breadth, the S&P 500 advanced decline line achieves a new high, as you can see right there, ever so slightly. And a new high for the S&P 500 advanced decline line on Friday, 5th to the 10th, provides a potential bullish leading indicator for new highs in the S&P 500. Big breakouts for the S&P 500 advanced decline line is a bullish leading indicator for the S&P 500, like we did here in June 2023, October 2023. Uh, December, January 2023. As you can see, we are breaking out. That probably means we do go higher the S&P 500 on good market breath. Guys, but if you've made it up until here, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, guys, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, like this video, and leave a comment for the algorithm. Cheers.